Women all over the world, get ready for inspiring and empowering interviews from women at the top of their field who are kicking butt in their business and who are prepared to share shocking revelations from being in the limelight. You are now listening to Today's Leading Women with Marie Grace Berg. Podcast your passion. Yes, did you know you can podcast your passion, make a difference, and make money talking about what you love talking about? That's how I got to do what I'm doing, talking to wonderful women every day. Here are today's leading women. Want to learn how I did it? Go to podcastyourpassion.com. That's www.podcastyourpassion.com. Welcome to today's Leading Women podcast with your host, Marie Graceberg. Today's Leading Women is a podcast with you in mind, the woman entrepreneur, you the small business owner, you the aspiring entrepreneur. Every day, seven days a week, Marie Graceberg brings to life the stories and the journeys of these successful women entrepreneurs. Their true stories are aimed at helping you understand how to turn that dream of owning and running a business into a reality. While these women can be described as extraordinary because they all seize an opportunity and with the determination and commitment, turn it into a successful business, they are also just like us. They all had to battle with day-to-day challenges that faced the rest of us, making sure we have enough money to survive, feeding our children, and juggling the many different priorities in our lives. So women of the world, join Marie Graceberg as she takes you to what could be one of the most remarkable ride in your life. Hi, this is Mary Graceberg, and I want to thank you for joining me for this first episode of today's Leading Women. Every day, seven days a week, I will be interviewing the most remarkable and inspiring women entrepreneurs of today. Each interview takes you back to when they got started, touching on their big challenges and how they turn these challenges into their first successes and what excites them for the future. I am excited for you because this means you not only have something to fill your commute time, your workout time, your multitasking time like cleaning the house, doing the laundry, going to the groceries, walking the kids or the dog, or just your me time, where you could use some added inspiration. Who knows, it could spark the inner muse in you that's been hiding and now ready to come out. Each episode will follow a certain format on every show, so you will know exactly what to expect day in and day out. And all episodes start with a brief intro about them and their business. So let's dive into the topics one by one. The defining moment. We'll start with asking them what was their defining moment when they saw the light and made them say, this is my business. We will also touch on what made them think of that niche for those people who might want to start one and have no clue how to go about it. You'll be surprised by their answers and may just turn out to be what you're looking for. Next, we will dive into the market situation and their personal situation at startup. They obviously found a need and filled it. So here, we'll dive into what the current market conditions were at the time they got started and how they felt their business strategy rose to meet that need. We will also touch on their personal situation were at startup so you can understand where they came from and where they stand at that time. Next is the compelling vision. Inherent to every entrepreneur is having that certain vision for themselves and for their business that continues to drive them towards success. We will get to listen to what kind of vision these women entrepreneurs have that is so compelling and so big. They are willing to weather through the storms in pursuit of this vision. You will also hear from them why this is so important and how you can create your own compelling vision if you don't have one yet. Then we'll go talk about how they prepared themselves for success. Here, we will explore those qualities that help them to succeed and how they actually use those personal qualities in a time when doubt, worry, and fear might have set in their minds. One of those personal qualities is tenacity, the ability not to quit when faced with a situation. Another worth noting is that 
women entrepreneurs these days are extremely organized, more so than their counterparts. They have attention to details. They stick to what they do. They have the glue-like qualities that can be admired by a lot of people who are not quite at the level in their business. We will hear from these ladies what they think about this and how they applied it in their business and personal life. Next, we touch upon the journey. One of the highlights of the show and in an entrepreneur's life in general is their journey. Every one of these women entrepreneurs have a unique journey that is full of twists and turns, yet colorful and remarkable. Entrepreneurs face challenges that define their being and to get to those challenges takes a very special person. We will get to know that special person in them. We will explore what have been their biggest challenges and what type of qualities they have that enabled them to overcome those barriers to success that a lot of women entrepreneurs face today. One of the key areas in building a business is how to stay motivated and balance work-life issues. Being a business owner myself, motivation plays a key factor day in and day out, and motivation could mean many things to many people. In the business realm, the ability to stay motivated is so crucial to overall success in life. Now, the challenge with entrepreneurs is how to click on and click off and create a work-life balance, particularly if you have a family. But regardless if you are living a single person because you still have to develop the skill set that enable you to relate to other people. We will also ask these women entrepreneurs about their perspective on work-life balance. Do they look upon their business as a means to balance their life after work or do they carry work through their life? Then we'll talk about the benchmarks for success. These women entrepreneurs have businesses that are doing quite well and with that success flows into other areas of their lives. Here we will dive more into how they measure their successes. What are some of the benchmarks that they use to keep them moving in the right direction and what their feelings about success? Now, we would like to say that success is a mindset. You know, I can have $10 in my pocket, but my mind feels like a millionaire. I feel great about myself and I'm moving forward. The opposite way will be a multi-billionaire and be totally miserable. So am I successful? Financially, yes. Individually, probably not. So in their journey as an entrepreneur, we will get to ask not only about their benchmarks for success, but what is their feelings about success? When you say feelings, it's a very general term and it's disarming because a lot of people have feelings. So if you ask me, what's my measure for success? I would say, well, it is the attainment of my daily goals that I set for myself. I've got a vertical focus with a horizontal action every day. My vertical focus is called my horizon by getting things done methodologically. And it ranges with what I call the 50,000 foot level, which is my life, a life of significance versus I have acquired hundreds of millions of dollars. And at some point, the acquisition stop. I look forward to my significance. And what's my significance? My significance is helping those poor but deserving students from my alma mater afford to go to college, etc. The topic is really interesting and you'll get to listen in on what this entrepreneurial women have got to say. They have reached their goals, now what? One of the interesting part in following an entrepreneur's journey is what excites them about the future and how they plan on going after what they have up their sleeves. In this topic, we'll dive into what their plans are in the future, not only for their business, but in their life in general. We often think that we have arrived when we hit that first success, and the irony is that we have just started. That opportunity of success leads to another one, and another, and so on. So while it's important to celebrate this milestone success, we also have to remember that it may just be the beginning of a much, much bigger goal. And that's exciting. The takeaways. These remarkable women entrepreneurs obviously got some lessons learned under their belt of experience. We're going to take them back to the past. Say they're going to start all over again as an entrepreneur and they are in a class with other entrepreneurs who could be you. Entrepreneurs who are hungry and thirsty for success or more variety or for making that first buck. And they're looking at you saying there's more to it than that. 
we're going to hear what types of special suggestions, advice, and lessons that Lee Learn can give you, their fellow entrepreneurs, knowing where they came from and where they headed at. They will also be sharing us their top internet resource or tool that they use that's radically changing the way they do business. And entrepreneurs are wide readers, so in addition to this tool, we will also get to hear what's the number one book they recommend that will help you grow personally and professionally. And last but not least, their superhero or superheroine of their life. Each of these women entrepreneurs are superheroes, or shall I say, superheroines in their own right, because they have done this and they have done that, but also because they have experienced a lot of challenges that you probably can relate to. And along this journey is that someone who in one way or, or another had a great impact in their quest for success. That someone could be one of your favorite cartoon character like Superman, or it could be your mom who helped shape who you are and how you present to the world. Either way, we've got to know who they represent themselves best in the superhero characters. All right, now that I have told you what the show is all about, I want to share with you why I created today's Leading Women podcast. For years, I had this love affair with listening to biographies of successful people, particularly women. I would consume books, audiobooks, and anything I can get my hands to. Until recently in 2012, I began listening to podcasts and boy did it change my life. I got to listen to interviews of other women entrepreneurs, women leaders, women who are making a difference. And it's free and on demand, meaning you can download them in your computer or your iPhone or your iPod or any listening device that you have. However, the challenge was I was consuming them faster than they were able were available on a daily basis. Plus, those podcasts that really fired me up were few, if not almost non-existent. So, I immediately saw that need for a podcast that's not only aired on a daily basis, but also only talks about women. Not that I'm a gender biased here, which I'm not, but you got what I mean. I wanted a podcast on women entrepreneurs aired daily. That's all that mattered. So it was from that desire that today's Leading Women podcast was born. I decided to create a conduit, a bridge that would allow people around the globe to have access to entrepreneurial stories, lessons, and concepts. My goal is to create a headquarter where today's best and most exciting ideas are shared. Most of all, I want to offer content that will inspire you to take that leap and make this world a better place by applying your passions and energy to creating brilliance. So now that you know all about today's leading women and my reasoning for creating it, I will finish this episode with a little background about me, your host. My name is Mary Graceberg. I grew up in one of those small islands in the Philippines. Like many of you, I had a dream. That dream led to many successes as well as failures in my life. I grew up in a big family of nine, and I'm fifth in ordinal position. We grew up with very few of the so-called comforts in life. We talk about no electricity, no TV, no phones, but our home was filled with love, care, and support for each other. We learned to be self-reliant by producing almost everything that we needed in our day-to-day life. My father died when I was only 11 years old. My youngest sister was only two and had no recollection of him whatsoever. I had all but fun memories of him. He, unknownst to me, was instrumental in my life and where I am today. But when he died, I witnessed for the first time how difficult life was. My mom was a lone child and she was never used to hard work because grandma and grandpa were there to take to make her life easier. Not when my father died. I saw how she worked so hard to make ends meet. I can still remember that one night with me carrying my youngest sister, who back then was only two, while holding with my other hand my second youngest sister, who was four. We were standing by the mango tree, waiting for mom to come home after working for one of our neighbor's fields, just so we can have something to eat that day. It wasn't after some years that I realized this was one of the driving force that got me to where I am today. I didn't want to see my mom suffer any longer. I didn't want to see her cry, although I've only seen her crying once. I guess she was somehow hiding it from us. For some reason, I've yet to ask her. 
After that day, I promised myself to do well in school so I can go abroad, earn dollars, and uplift my family's economic conditions. And lo and behold, I graduated with flying colors. I had left ambition after graduation from high school. I wanted to become a nurse because during that time, being a nurse is your ticket to go abroad. And that's exactly what I was looking for doing. Days before graduation, we were given a one-on-one -on -one talk with one of our quote-unquote career goal counselor. When I told her what I wanted to take for college, she immediately rose her eyebrows and said, how in the world are your family going to afford this? Not exactly her word, but very similar. And I remember to this day with tears in my eyes that I will never let someone else's inability to see my value derail my achievement of my goals in life. But she was right. Financially, we didn't have the means to do so. My mom would say that even if we have to sell all that what we've got, which were not too many, still it won't be enough to even fly me to the city, let alone pursue one of the most expensive careers at that time. I knew I had to find a way. I was stuck in school and that qualified me for a scholarship grant, plus I took an exam to win another college scholarships. I knew that if I could just get one of the scholarships, I can work my way into finishing and getting my degree. And I did. It was not all fun, like literally, my college life was just dormitory, school, library, dormitory. That was it. No social life, no parties, no fun out, no nothing. But I was willing to make those sacrifices, a trade that most of, most of us entrepreneurs more often have to do, especially in the beginning. At 24, exactly two years after graduation, I got my first taste of success abroad. I was hired as a nurse on board a cruise ship, and for the first time, I saw in my hand what an American dollar looks like. You can't believe how happy I was. I knew from that moment on that my life and my family's lives will be different. Mom would finally be assured that she no longer need to labor hard for us, that it was time for her to reap the rewards of her labor of love. Four years later, my dream of living and working in the so-called land of the free materialized. I got the job offer to work in the United States of America, and I knew my mom is going to see the Golden Gate, which she only knew in magazines. And by the way, my mom saw the Golden Gate along with all the many sides she dreamt of. Good for you, mom. You deserve it. At 32, I met the man of my life. It was one of the happiest moments in my life so far. And in 2010, we decided to move to Norway, where he's from. We wanted to start a family. I mean, at 35, it was really high time to think about one. But it didn't come as easy as we first thought. I struggled with multiple IVF failures, five to be exact. And for those of you who have been through the arduous challenges of going through the IVF process, you know what I'm talking about. I got so sick to the point that I can no longer take any more of those nasty hormones. But that was not the worst part. Until one full morning of 2012, I got a call from my doctor. I remember saying, do I have cancer? I mean, I know I had all the risk of developing a SARS after going through multiple failed IVF or in vitro fertilization, my maternal age, no children, etc. So the ads were really not in my favor. He told me he was not sure and that he needed to send me to do a CT scan and MRI and that he's going to refer me to a cancer specialist in a big hospital in another city. Living in a small city where resources are sped out, getting all these tests at once was next to impossible. I had to wait a week for my CT scan, another week to wait for the result, and another week to get my MRI done. We're talking about a month long of arduous and painful waiting. But in the midst of this, I was having a nervous break breakdown. I couldn't think right. I was crying all the time. And I didn't want to see or talk to anyone. I just wanted to be alone. And in my solitude, I prayed a lot. I asked God I didn't want to die yet. I had so much I wanted to do with my life, for my family, for my friends, for the whole world. And that if he could only give me a second chance at life, I will do everything to deserve it. Came my judgment day, I remembered being called to meet with a cancer doctor and two other doctors. Me and my husband were bracing ourselves. Thank God he was there with me. I remembered feeling so sad having no one around me with my family in another part of the world. 
I was feeling ambivalent then. I had both positive and negative feelings, but of course, I was hoping that the results were negative. The doctor spoke and said, you are a lucky girl. It doesn't happen so often that we send a patient home with good news like you. Those were words were like miracle from heaven. I was indeed the happiest girl that day. It felt something big and heavy was lifted off my shoulder. So it turned out I had a cancer scare. Thank God it was just a cancer scare, but I took it so seriously. I remember promising God that I will do everything I can to deserve this. I took a hard look at my life and examined all areas of my life that I needed to improve on. I thought of those things that I can control that can have impact on me developing a cancer. I knew diet and exercise is one. I, can only, I cannot control my genes nor the environment around me, but I can definitely control what I put in my mouth, what I eat, what I drink, and what I do with my body. Being a nurse myself, I knew that eating healthy and living a healthy lifestyle is important for preventing diseases from developing. But even then, for the first time, this was a top priority, so I did. But there was also one thing missing, and that was doing something I truly want and enjoy. I was starting to get burned out from being a nurse, and it was not giving me the flexibility I needed anymore. Like many of you, I tried different things, but none resonated well, so what I really want until one day, a light bulb moment came, and the rest is history. January 3rd of 2014, right after New Year, I flew to Las Vegas for not only my first intro to the podcasting world, New Media Expo, but to meet my mentor, John Lee Dumas, and many of the cool people in the mastermind group I belong called the Fire Nation Elite, led by another other than my mentor, John Lee Dumas. I was full of excitement. Christmas and the new year came a fleeting moment as I was consumed with planning and preparing for this one big event in my podcasting life. But despite being prepared and all the stuff, it turned turn out to be a plan and would have wanted it to happen. Long story short, I missed the excitement big time. As you may recall, there was a series of snowstorm in the East Coast at that time. I was glad to leave the cold and the snow in Norway or so I thought only to get stuck in New York, then in Chicago, on my way to Las Vegas. It took three painful days for me to reach Las Vegas. Three days of being stuck in the airport, long and arduous wait, plus getting sick of diarrhea and vomiting. I guess the combination of stress, lack of sleep, poor food choices at the airport, and just plain exhaustion had me totally run down by the time I landed at the airport in Las Vegas by 2 in the morning. Thanks to the outpouring of love and support from my Fire Nation elite family, led by Melinda Ogden Yemen, who stayed up late at that conference hotel only to meet, greet, and welcome me home. I almost couldn't hold my tears of joy and gratitude as they all each gave me a warm hug and welcomed me with their sweetest smiles. I realized what a power having a mastermind of like-minded people who all are supportive of each other is. So I missed two days of the event already, but it wasn't missing the event I was concerned about. But the two chances I missed of celebrating with the Fire Nation elite members. I missed not one, but two. I managed to fly to San Francisco and was just going to pick up some of my things, only to find myself stuck there for two weeks before being able to fly to San Diego, my final destination for my podcasting journey. I must have been really sick during that trip that I ended up having multiple episodes of fainting spells that led me to several trips to the emergency. The last places I want to be, but thank God everything went fine. So long story short, my journey to what you are listening to right now, this podcast, Today's Leading Women, is a culmination of that labor of love. I am truly blessed and proud to have pulled this through despite the challenges I've faced along the way. And I want to thank you for joining me here today with the first episode of Today's Leading Women. I have no clue where this ride may take me. I do know though that it is a journey I am thrilled to take part of. Every day from now on, I will take you through the journeys of these remarkable women entrepreneurs and help you find a spark or feed your already burning flame. I ask you to join me every day and together let's build a fortress in the form of giving life to the passion we have inside so that we can have the kind of life we want for ourselves, for our children, for our family, for our community, and for our world. Thank you again, and please, if you find value in this podcast, which I know you will, 
and the message we're trying to spread at Today's Leading Women, then click the subscribe button below and give my show a review and hopefully five star rating. This type of support will allow my show to gain the rec recognition it needs to reach as many people as possible. In turn, we'll be able to share this incredible free medium of knowledge and experience with the world. And we all are going to be winners. Women of the world, prepare to reach for the stars. Feeling inspired and empowered to make it happen? Then take the next step and go get your free guide to the top 10 resources that today's leading women use to stay at the top of their game, plus Marie's favorite today. Visit todaysleadingwomen.com slash guide for your free download, and we'll see you on the next episode of Today's Leading Women with Marie Grace Berg.